A large candlelight vigil will also be held tonight at Bayfront Park, and that's where we find CBS4's Lisa Cabrera. Lisa? That's right, Maggie. Hundreds are expected here at this vigil, which is scheduled to get underway just about 7 o'clock. Here is what they are handing out, the American flag, and then on the back they have hymns and songs that people are going to be singing here. If we take you a little closer to the stage, we're inside the amphitheater, and you can see that people are already gathering here in the bleachers. Uh, and as we head towards the stage, you'll see a giant American flag. Local religious leaders, community leaders calling today as a day of remembrance. Uh, if you've been watching television throughout the day, you will know that uh, religious leaders nationwide have uh, been asking for a show of solidarity today, one week following the attack on America. And of course, we uh, most of us are aware that we are now beginning Rosh Hashanah. This is the uh, Jewish New Year. So community leaders and religious leaders with all different types of backgrounds are trying to send a message to firefighters, to rescue crews in New York and Washington, D.C., to let them know that they are in the thoughts, in the prayers of people and Americans all over. In downtown Miami, Lisa Cabrera, CBS4 News. Thank you, Sam. Americans everywhere continue to express their sorrow and solidarity. In Indianapolis, every nine minutes for the past 42 hours, firefighters and police have been placing American flags to represent each person missing or dead. In Seattle, a moment of silence at the exact moment of the first attack on the World Trade Center. And a week after the attack, South Florida is remembering too. CBS4's Lisa Cabrera is live in Bayfront Park with that story. Lisa? Maggie, organizers very much surprised by the turnout tonight. Truly a remarkable evening. There were lots of tears, there were hugs. Everyone in the community coming together, hundreds of people with a sea of red, white, and blue. <laughs> Hundreds of candles burning in the night, each flame contributing to a sense of unity in downtown Miami. More than 500, some wrapped in the American flag, almost every single one holding the red, white, and blue. To me, it represents two very important things, God and light above everything, and our country, which really needs God's help right now. We have gone through a very horrible situation, but we also know that God will be there each step of the way to help us through. South Floridians from all over flocking to Bayfront Amphitheater in a show of incredible unity many find comforting. We're very proud of the turnout that we had. Uh, I mean, we expected a, a good turnout. We wanted the whole community to come together. This prayer vigil dedicated as a day of remembrance one week following the attack on America. The South Floridians pulling together, holding on to hope. We are very saddened with everything and we really support every single family, every single, everybody that's actually helping out. Elsewhere, children join hands attending prayer services dedicated to remembering those who lost their lives in the attack. These youngsters learning and trying to understand. I want God to take care of the people who died in the building and I really don't like what the terrorists have done to the people inside the building. I felt really sad about all the people who are jumping off the building because you would think that it was debris and stuff falling and I was happy that the people in the building number seven were able to go out before it collapsed. And tonight's vigil at Payfront Park going uh, starting at 7.30, going well after 9 p.m. tonight. Many of the people we sp spoke with here say that they were sending their thoughts and their prayers to firefighters and rescue crews in New York. They say by attending tonight's vigil, they are, uh, in fact, just showing support for the country that they love. In downtown Miami, Lisa Cabrera, CBS 4 News Tonight. In just a few minutes, people of all faiths will gather in South Florida for a candlelight vigil. Ben O'Schmidt is live at Bayfront Park in Miami with more on an evening of patriotism and prayer. And I'll see you out there in just a little bit, Benno. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing you out here, Jennifer. This is, of course, a very special event for all of us in the NBC6 family. Let me show you what they're giving out to folks who are coming. You see this American flag in the bottom here. It's hard to make out, but our partners, the Miami Herald, as well as NBC6, participating in this. 5,000 of these candles, we're told, will be lit 
in a massive prayer around 8.30. Let's show you some video now from Bayfront this earlier today. The preparations extensive for this. Again, we're told that 5,000 people will be here. Jennifer, as you said, will be coming out around 8 o'clock, we're told, to address the crowd. We ran into one woman from New York, a woman you see there selling flags. We asked her why it's important for her to be here on this day. It's a prayer for them, and it's it's in their go it's in their name, and it's just so they know that we're here, you know, and that we're not gonna let their death just go away, you know, that we're gonna do that the United States is gonna do something about it. How's business with the flags? Are you selling them? Yeah, we've been doing good. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a shortage on these things. Very much so. The event, A Prayer for America, South Florida's Day of Remembrance, starts here at 7 o'clock. As we said, Jennifer will be here shortly after 8. It is a somber occasion, but there is a sense of celebration here, a celebration of those lives lost. Reporting live in Miami, Ben Schmidt, NBC6. The healing process will take weeks, months, even years for people in New York and here in our community as well. One thing is certain, we need each other right now more than ever. Ben O'Schmidt is live in Bedford Park where thousands of people from all different backgrounds came together in prayer and patriotism. I see the flag behind you, Beno. Jackie, it really was an extraordinary gathering here, celebrating religious tolerance, celebrating religious diversity. It has been over now for about two hours. It's a safe bet that those that gathered here, as you said, thousands will remember this for years. God bless America! Amidst a sea of American flags, a celebration of diversity and an overwhelming show of patriotism. After the national anthem, prayers led in several languages. Judaism teaches that there are three ways to mourn. For many, the events in New York City, the horrible attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, don't seem that far away. We saw so much of what happened to the television last week that we just can't get away from those images that were just so vivid. Um, I think we're all in it together. Religious leaders from many different faiths taking the stage. The publisher of the Miami Herald, our coverage partners, says this is apolitical as it should be. The people who will speak tonight are religious leaders from every religion. Um, and I think for organizations like the newspaper and like the TV station, uh, it's important for us to participate. Jennifer Bellopi, NBC6. NBC6 proud to be sponsoring and participating in the event as well. Some lost friends in the attack, like Carlos Jimenez, the city manager. He says goodbye to a firefighter battalion chief in New York City. Personal friend, so there was a face attached to it all. This Muslim, a Pakistani-born U.S. citizen, moved to tears. It is the responsibility of every human being to get rid of this evil. Miami Mayor Joe Carroyo here as well. He says both the city and, in a larger sense, the country will emerge from this stronger. For now, reporting live in Miami, Benno Schmidt, NBC6. Another sign of U.S. patriotism set to take place tonight. This is a live picture of Bayfront Park in downtown Miami. From 7 to 9 p.m., a candlelight visual entitled A Prayer for America. Several Dolphin players will be in attendance, including Jason Taylor and Patrick Sertain. The public is encouraged to attend. Those in attending are encouraged to bring a flag and a candle. Once again, that's from 7 to 9 p.m. tonight at Bayfront Park in downtown Miami. In the Plex, I'm Deuces Rogers, 7 News. And hundreds more in South Florida planning to honor the victims. Live pictures now from Bayfront Park as the crowds begin to gather. A massive prayer vigil is scheduled to begin at 7 p.m. Players from the Miami Dolphins, the Heat, and the Panthers are going to join local television celebrities in a candle lighting ceremony hosted by the Kiwanis Club of Little Havana. And, you know, people are coming together here in South Florida, too, remembering those lost in last week's attacks. Tonight, Louis Aguirre is joining us from a candlelight vigil at Bayfront Park in downtown Miami with a flag there. Louis. Hi, Louis. Hi, Belkis. You know, we were just talking about all those Hollywood stars coming out. 
and supporting America right now, giving their all, but check out the stars behind me. This is a beautiful sight. The sun is setting over downtown Miami, and over here people are lighting candles and waving their flags. And the show of support for our nation right now, remembering the victims of last week's horrible terrorist attack. People from all over the community, the Latin community, the Haitian community, the Anglo community, coming together as one today in the show of support of the president, the show of remembrance of the victims of the terrorist attack. And it's, it's just a beautiful thing to see the community finally coming together for the common good, for the common cause. Um, this ceremony has just kind of started right now. So many people in attendance, among them some Miami Dolphins, some local celebrities who, especially members of the media who come here not only to cover it, but also who came as just Joe Public. Your friends, your neighbors are all here, and it's, it's good to see that the community here in South Florida is also doing its part to honor America during these troubled times. Then Doc, just back to you. Very uplifting. Thank you, Louie. A lot of nice music happening. Very nice. Something to smile about. Downtown Miami earlier this evening as hundreds gathered to mourn the victims of the World Trade Center and the Pentagon one week after the terrorist attack. A similar scene in Fort Lauderdale where American pride is at an all-time high tempered by emotions over our nation's loss. We're going to begin though with that uh, memorial at Bayfront Park. The night team's Richard Lemus on hand with more for us. Richard. Laurie, and you could definitely back me up on this one. It was an emotional night out here in downtown Miami at Bayfront Park. Hundreds were in attendance, and as each person made their way in, they received a flag and a candle for what can best be described as an outpouring of patriotism. With downtown as a background, hundreds of candles light up Miami skyline. Liberty and justice for all. South Floridians coming together for a good cause during one of the worst times in our lives. It's very gut-wrenching, it's very hard, and I just had to come. In the wake of disaster, it's a time of reflection, prayer, and hope for peace at this candlelight vigil at Bayfront Park. This is a, it's a big thing for the community to come together, the country to come together, and this is a part of what we can do to show people that we care. Pat Surtain, the Miami Dolphin. Miami Dolphin players, Panthers team members, and even Channel 7's own Lori Jennings attending in support. Buenas noches, I'm Lori Jennings from WSBN 7 News. Familiar faces among the countless of concerned residents. I wanted to bring my and son out here our and show our support to the tragedy. I mean, it's really affected all of us. And while all of us may be affected, the effects of unity can also be felt. I just think it reflects the support the American people have and, uh, and the community of Miami. And just more proof that patriotism is still alive. There is a South Floridian who made these t-shirts with her very own money, handing them out by the dozens. By the way, this vigil wrapped up just about an hour ago. Live in downtown Miami, Richard Lemus. Esta noche miles de personas acudieron a una vigilia de recordación en el parque Bayfront en Biscayne Boulevard a la que también asistieron conocidas personalidades de la comunidad. Sandra Peebles estuvo cubriendo la vigilia y ahora nos acompaña con toda la información. Sandra, adelante. Muy buenas noches, Guillermo. Como bien sabes tú y sabes, Alina, eh, cuando este lugar estaba lleno de personas, fue una noche extremadamente emotiva, tan emotiva, que ni siquiera yo pude escapar las lágrimas. Pero creo que hablo por muchas personas que estaban aquí, que no solo fueron lágrimas de tristeza por los que han fallecido debido a este atentado, sino también lágrimas de gran orgullo y esperanza por la unión que ha provocado este terrible dolor. mar de banderas rojo, azul y blanco. 
canto, oración, esperanza. Exactamente una semana después de los atentados, miles se congregaron en el Parque Bayfront del centro de Miami para celebrar una vigilia en memoria de los caídos. Sí, verdaderamente me siento muy emocionado. Yo soy colombiano, pero he adoptado este país como si fuera mío. Y estoy muy emocionado con todos los incidentes que han pasado. Ha sido un golpe muy fuerte para nosotros. Tenemos mucho amor por este país que nos ha acogido, que nos ha dado oportunidad para todos estos inmigrantes. Nosotros tenemos un valor, un, un, un deber moral con Estados Unidos y apoyarlo en esta cosa tan triste, que no solo han sido los americanos, sino todos los latinos que vivimos en este país. Ese compromiso moral compartido por tantos inmigrantes agradecidos esta noche. Inmigrantes como Juan Carlos Roldán de Colombia, Mabel Betancourt de Cuba, la familia Morán de Guatemala, los Serafín de Haití, Carolina de Nicaragua y Karina de Honduras. Ahora una familia de muchas naciones unida por un gran dolor, encontrando uno en el otro la fuerza para seguir adelante. Muy, muy agradecido de todos los hispanos que vienen aquí a recordar a, a las víctimas de esta catástrofe. Muy agradecido y esto también como te da energía para, para seguir adelante, para seguir la... Eh, apagando fuego y lo que sea necesario. Para muchos aquí, niños o ancianos, líderes espirituales o políticos, hasta nuestros mismos compañeros de Univisión, no queda más remedio que levantarse unidos y fuertes para asegurarle un futuro libre y democrático a niños como José Zambrana, quien con sus seis añitos vino a orar por los padres que perdieron a sus hijos. Bueno, y con esa canción culminó este acto solemne. Entre los líderes espirituales que estuvieron aquí esta noche estuvo una de la religión musulmán y luego de compartir con nosotros su oración fue aplaudido por el público. En vivo desde el Bayfront Park, Sandra Pibos, Noticias 23, Univisión. Beno Schmidt, live for us tonight at Bayfront Park with a look. Beno. It was an extraordinary celebration really here, Micah, a celebration of religious tolerance, religious diversity, and also, of course, a stark and sad reminder of those who were gone. God bless America. Amidst a sea of American flags, a celebration of diversity and an overwhelming show of patriotism. After the national anthem, prayers led in several languages. Judaism teaches that there are three ways to mourn. For many, the events in New York City, the horrible attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, don't seem that far away. We saw so much of what happened to the television last week that we just can't get away from those images. They were just so vivid. Um, I think we're all in it together. Religious leaders from many different faiths taking the stage. The publisher of the Miami Herald, our coverage partners, says this is apolitical as it should be. The people who will speak tonight are religious leaders from every religion. Um, and I think for organizations like the newspaper and like the TV station, uh, it's important for us to participate. Jennifer Vallapi, NBC6. NBC6 proud to be sponsoring and participating in the event as well. Some lost friends in the attack, like Carlos Jimenez, the city manager. He says goodbye to a firefighter battalion chief in New York City. Personal friend, so there was a face attached to it all. This Muslim, a Pakistani-born U.S. citizen, moved to tears. It is the responsibility of every human being to get rid of this evil. A prayer for America, South Florida's Day of Remembrance, was what this event was called. Thousands showed up here. We spoke to Miami Mayor Joe Carroyo here as well. He says the city and Miami and the country will emerge from all of this stronger. Reporting live in Miami, Ben Schmidt, WB39 News. Muy buenas tardes y gracias por acompañarnos. Siete días han pasado desde el infame ataque terrorista en suelo norteamericano y hoy el presidente Bush le aseguró al país que hemos ganado la guerra de la humanidad. El presidente, que no habló de guerra en el día de hoy, sí dijo que aunque esta fue una de las semanas más terribles en la historia de este país, también sacó a relucir lo mejor del pueblo norteamericano. 
Ana Cuervo está en vivo desde el downtown de Miami, donde se hará esta noche una vigilia. Ana, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes, Ambrosio. En una hora, aquí en el anfiteatro Bayfront, comenzará una vigilia para recordar la primera semana desde el ataque. Durante los últimos siete días se han derramado muchas lágrimas en este país, pero también se han donado más de 55 millones de dólares. Hoy se honraron a las víctimas y los que se han unido a su tragedia. Estas son las personas desaparecidas. Estas son las familias destruidas hace exactamente siete días. Recordándolas entre los restos, los escombros, por todo el país se hizo un minuto de silencio a las 8 y 54 de la mañana, el momento en que se desató toda esta muerte y destrucción. En Washington, 300 empleados de la Casa Blanca también hicieron una pausa junto al presidente para recordar a las víctimas. Que Dios siga bendiciendo a América, afirmó Bush. Y fue sobre las bendiciones que se han visto en la última semana que se concentró el presidente en el día de hoy. La voluntad de todo un pueblo de ayudar a los que más están sufriendo. En la semana desde el ataque, nuestros ciudadanos compasivos y generosos han librado la primera fase de la guerra contra el terrorismo. Con representantes de las principales agencias caricativas del país, Bush habló de las largas horas de trabajo, las toneladas de comida y ropa que se han donado para ayudar a reconstruir vidas destruidas. Y le pidió a los ciudadanos que sigan ayudando. Y en la zona del desastre, los trabajadores de rescate llegan a una muy triste realidad. Que las probabilidades de rescatar a alguien vivo ahora son muy pequeñas, dijo el alcalde de Nueva York. Más de 5.400 personas están desaparecidas y han confirmado que otras 200 están muertas. Mientras tanto, el movimiento talibán que gobierna en Afganistán se prepara para una guerra santa contra Estados Unidos. De acuerdo a informes que surgieron hoy en ese país cada vez más aislado. La noticia llega en medio de la confusión si los principales clérigos del país considerarían o no el ultimátum de Estados Unidos entregado por una delegación pakistaní. Entreguen a Osama Bin Laden o enfrenten un ataque militar por parte de Estados Unidos. Pero Bush habló hoy más sobre la ayuda para las víctimas y sus familias y anunció que las, páginas, que las compañías principales del Internet han creado una página para informar sobre cómo usted puede ayudar. La dirección es www.libertyunite.org. O sea, con esa dirección usted puede averiguar cómo donar efectivo, sangre, ropa, todo tipo de ayuda para los sobrevivientes y todos están invitados a asistir a esta vigilia en la noche de hoy, la más grande desde el ataque en el sur de la Florida para rezar por este país. En vivo Ana Cuervo, regreso ahora con Leticia. Bueno y con una emotiva vigilia por la unidad, el sur de la Florida conmemoró hace unas horas la primera semana de los ataques terroristas en Nueva York y Washington. Nuestro colega Iván Taylor estaba en el Bayfront Park cuando miles de llamas iluminaron la noche. Y vamos contigo ahora al downtown, Iván, cuéntanos todo. Bueno, Leticia, dicen que hay diferentes maneras de manifestar el dolor. Y hay aquellos que creen que se puede hacer con lágrimas y con silencio. Esta noche los organizadores de este evento dijeron que todo eso se podía traducir a cantos y oraciones. Aquel que diga que los hispanos no aprecian su patria adoptiva tendría que haber presenciado lo acontecido en el parque Bayfront del downtown de Miami. Aparte de que soy nicaragüense, me siento también parte de este país y independientemente de lo que le haya pasado a toda esa gente, siento que debemos apoyarnos de una u otra manera. Esta bandera está aquí porque está paralela con la bandera norteamericana. Y estoy aquí apoyando este acto porque me siento americano. Yo soy de Costa Rica y mi país es un país lleno de paz y de amor. No existe el, ter el terrorismo, ni siquiera existe policía militar. Yo creo que para nosotros esto ha sido muy duro. Yo sé cómo es el terrorismo porque Perú también sufrió mucho terrorismo. Entonces yo vine a rezar por todos nuestros hermanos que fallecieron. Y las velas, las banderas y las oraciones no podían faltar, acentuando aún más el sentimiento sin precedente que se vivió aquí. La importancia de la oración de personas de distintas nacionalidades y de distintas creencias 
es que nosotros en este momento no podemos darnos el lujo de estar divididos. No podemos darle el gustazo a los terroristas de que ellos han venido de afuera a dividirnos por dentro. En este momento tenemos que estar muy unidos todos. Siempre hemos traído a la comunidad a, a una fiesta y pensábamos que era nuestro deber de traer a la comunidad a una oración. En la noche dijeron presente personalidades locales, incluyendo uno de los nuestros. Muy buenas noches. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ambrose Hernandez from Telemundo, Channel 51 News. Thank you. God bless America. Y una canción que sí trajo lágrimas a todos, fue la que también trajo recuerdos difíciles de olvidar. Bueno, y esta canción que conmovió a todos los presentes fue escrita irónicamente por un dúo que normalmente se dedican a ser comediantes de la radio, pero que dijeron que en estos momentos lo que el país quiere es orar, cantar y rezar. En vivo desde el downtown de Miami les informó Iván Taylor, regreso ahora con Ambrosio al estudio. Gracias Iván, sin duda alguna fue una noche llena de emociones y de unidad. Y precisamente en esa vigilia que conmemoró la triste fecha de hace exactamente una semana, también se unieron a la recordación religiosos de distintas denominaciones, funcionarios públicos y empresarios. Noemí Alarcón estaba presente. Gracias. Todas las noches a las 11 nos aseguramos de que usted sabe cuáles son las noticias más importantes que van a salir en el periódico mañana, pero hoy decidimos venir hasta acá, hasta el Bayfront Park, para decirles del evento magno que con mucho orgullo patrocinamos para conmemorar una semana de la tragedia en Nueva York. ¿Qué es lo que estamos queriendo lograr con esto? Es, es una oportunidad para Miami, para todo lo de la sur de Florida, para unirse hoy aquí y, y, y dejar saber al, a todo el pueblo, a toda América que estamos aquí con ellos, eh, somos americanos eh, y por los eh, seres um, humanos y también por los americanos que estamos todos aquí apoyándolos. Hay mucha gente que se está eh, quejando que no sabían del evento, ¿por qué fue así tan prematuro, tan, tan rápido? Bueno, el evento fue organizado en días, así que es, vaya, es una cosa increíble que, que pudimos lograr hacerlo y tener tantas personas aquí hoy y gracias a los, a los medios pudimos hacer eso. Pero a pesar de la pronta convocatoria, juzgue por usted mismo cómo estuvo la asistencia de esta noche, producto de la colaboración de muchas organizaciones, porque desde las velas hasta las banderas fueron donadas. Mañana va a haber más de la cobertura de este evento en nuestro periódico, por eso haga lo que siempre le aconsejo todas las noches. Compre su periódico mañana bien tempranito.